Now, in the Islamic tradition, apostasy, or leaving Islam, a Muslim abandons Islam, this is historically in Islamic civilization been a very serious offense. This has been considered uh, by some, by most Muslim scholars to be, in fact, capital offense. Now, this seems to be a uh, major point of non-compatibility with American political ideas. But it's very interesting, because there's also some examples from the life of the prophet, which give us a slightly different picture. When the prophet was in the city of Medina, which he ruled as the basically the, the, the chief of the city, a man came from Mecca who became Muslim. His name was Abdullah bin Sa'd became Muslim, and he actually became one of the scribes of the Prophet, so he would write the Prophet's messages and things, because the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. And eventually he decided he didn't like Islam anymore, and he went back to Mecca. He abandoned Islam, he said, I'm not Muslim anymore. He went back to Mecca. He wrote nasty poetry insulting Muslims and insulting the Prophet. Later on, he became Muslim again. And in fact, after the Muslims conquered Egypt, he was made the governor of Egypt. This does not seem to uh, concur with the apostasy as a death penalty offense narrative that I just gave. Not only did he apostatize, but he became, an en- he became an enemy agent against the Muslims. And later on, not only was he accepted back into Islam, but he was made a governor of a major province. This is very interesting. During the life of the Prophet, and during the early years of the Muslim community, I can't think of any person who is actually killed for leaving Islam. And this is because the way that people understood apostasy was m- more a, a matter of allegiance to a state or to a community than about personal conscience. In fact, Muslim scholars throughout Islamic history generally didn't care what people actually believed in their in their hearts. They didn't care what they did in their homes. They didn't care whether they were sincere in their prayers or whether they sat at home and drank alcohol. It didn't matter. What mattered was your public behavior. If you came out and were criticizing the Prophet Muhammad, insulting him, insulting the Quran, insulting Islam, trying to rile people up against their, their religion, this was a major offense for Muslim scholars. Because they saw this as a threat to their order, to their polity. It wasn't a matter of personal conscience. So this has led many Muslim scholars in the, in the, in the modern period, Muslim scholars today, and I'll give you some names, very influential scholars like Yusuf al-Qaradawi, like Sheikh Ali Jum'ad al-Mufti of Egypt, and others, to say that we have to distinguish now in a world where allegiance isn't to a religion. If you lived in medieval Europe, Europe in the 1200s, you belong to Christendom. You're, you're a Christian, first and foremost. If you lived in the Muslim world in, let's say, Syria in 1300, your identity was a Muslim. You, were, you, you lived in the abode of Islam. That was the, the chief polity to which you belonged. And leaving that religion was almost an act of, of treason to that politics. Now we don't live in a world like that. Now we live in a world in which religion is a, mat- a private matter, in which uh, uh, one's loyalty is, or one's identity is determined mostly by your nation state, maybe by your city or by your culture. And in this case, there's no reason to treat apostasy so severely. So, in, in a lot of ways, the, the apostasy that Muslim scholars considered so dangerous is more uh, similar to maybe high treason today. 